Hey everybody, today I want to show you a new package that I've been working on called Laravel Splate. Splate provides a super easy way to build single page applications with just Blade templates. Of course, under the hood, there is some JavaScript and Vue.js magic going on. But for you as a Laravel developer, this should feel very familiar. Think of Splate as the magic of Inertia.js with the simplicity of Blade. It's got all the routing stuff, the navigation stuff, but also a ton of components to develop apps really, really fast. So let's dive right in. Let's start by creating a new Laravel application. I call this one example app. So Composer is installing all the dependencies and when it's ready, we can continue by installing the splate package. So let's cd into my new directory and run Composer require and then the new Laravel Splate package. So once it's done, we can install Splate by running PHP Artisan Splate install. And this is gonna install a bunch of backend stuff like the middleware, but also the frontend stuff like Vue and Tailwind CSS. So when this is done, we can run npm run dev, and this is gonna build all of our assets and let's go to this example app.test URL. So let's open Firefox, refresh the page, and here is our fresh Splate application. And this might look familiar, and that's correct, because I just copied it over from the Jetstream repository. So we only have two pages, a home page and a documentation page. So let's click on the documentation page and you see how quick it loads. And that's because it's not a full page request. Let's open the dev tools and see what happens. So when I click on documentation, you'll see an Ajax request and let's open it up and you'll see that it only responded with some HTML. But the cool thing is this is still just a Blade template. You don't have to change anything in the way you build apps. So let's see how this works. You can create links with a dedicated link component, but if you want, you can configure Splate to just use regular old school anchor tags. But for this demo, I'm gonna use that new link component. Mostly because it has some additional features that I wanna show you. So let's create some space here, maybe march in top eight. And then I will create that link component and it's just a wrapper around the standard HTML anchor text. So I can just use an href, I can call this docs. And let's go back to the browser and click on it. Here it is and it just works. Let's go back to the home page. And another thing that just worked with Splate is history. So when I click the back button, it just reloads that previous page without a full page request. Another really cool thing you can build with this link component are modals. And it's just super easy. You can just add modal as an attribute to your link element. And then in your Blade template, in this docs Blade template, you need to tell what content should be in the modal. So here we can use a split modal component and we are just gonna wrap these two lines into this component. And that's it, let's save this one. Let's go back to the browser, click on docs and here is our modal with those two lines of text. Let's change modal to slide over and let's see what happens. It's that simple. You don't have to change one more thing. And that documentation link, it still works. It still loads the full content in that panel. So you can reuse the same blade template for full pages and for modals. So let's get rid of all the stuff. Let's remove the classes. And let me show the most simple component we have, which is the toggle component. Let's imagine we have a block with some short content or maybe like a short description of the content. And Let's create a tag for the full content. And what we want is just a button so we can toggle between the short content and the full content. So let's create that button and at the click event with toggle. And that's it for the button. So let's name it show hide more. And inside this component, we can use both blade and view syntax. So in this case, we're going to use that V show directive to show or hide the content. So let's go back to the browser and here's our short content. 
We click on the button and there's our full content. But I want two buttons, one to show and one to hide. And we can do that as well with the set toggle method. I create one button to show the content and I call this one show more and let's duplicate it, show less and we set it to false. And let's also show and hide the buttons accordingly. Whoops, P show toggled. All right, show more and show less. That's it. Now, this was a very simple component, but there's also a data component, which is more interesting. So let's change this one to data. And the data can more or less take any kind of data. So not only Boolean values like the toggle one. So let's give this one uh, default data. Show, and this time I'm going to set it to true. So the full content is shown by default. And I need to change this toggle thing to data.show. And I can replace the set toggle method as well to data.show equals true or false. Let's go back to the browser. And as you can see, we now by default see the full content. And that show less button still works, show more still works. So since we are now building single page applications, you might want to use this for state management. And if I go to the documentation page and go back to the home page, my state is lost. So luckily there's a fix. You can just add a remember attribute and give it a key. In this case, well, let's go with content. And now when you navigate to the next page, let's hide it, go to the docs and back, you see my content is still hidden. But when I fully reload the page, it's still lost. And we can also fix that because we can use local storage to store the state of this component. And Splay does this for you. So let's hide the full content and reload the page and it's still gone. For our next demo, we need some database data. So let's go to the database seeder and uncomment this uh, user factory thing. Let's migrate the database and let's seed. So we now have 10 users in our database. And the cool thing about this data component is that we can give it any kind of data. So for example, you can also give it a user model. So let's go with the first user. You probably won't do this in production, but yeah, it's just a demo. Let's get rid of all this stuff. And then I'm going to use the fee text directive to show the user's name. So let's go to the browser and there it is. And just to be sure, let's open up a Tinker session and grab that first user from the database. And yeah, that's the first name we saw. So this works. All right, let's move to the next component. This is the defer component which can load data from your API or maybe an external API. So for this example, I have an API that gives me a random quote. Uh, it's JSON formatted. And every time I refresh it, I get a new quote. So let's grab this URL and paste it in here. And this component gives me three props. So I have a processing prop, which you guessed it indicates that the request is processing. So processing and then we use a uh, fee if processing and we have a reload method so we could create a button and every time we click it a new random quote will be fetched from that api and then lastly of course we want to show that quote so this component also has a response prop and if i remember correctly the key was content but i'm not really sure so let's go back to the browser and yes, it was content. So response.content, that's it. Let's go to our page and here we have a quote. And you'll see every time I click on reload, it really does fetch a new quote from the API. So next up is forms. I've prepared three uh, routes, uh, a user show route, a user edit route, and a user update route. And here I've got a user controller, it's all very simple. It just returns a blade view with the user's name. So let's go to that route, user slash one, to fetch the first user. Oops. Here you can see it, it just echoes out the user's name. And then the edit template is still empty. So 
I'm going to be really lazy. I'm grabbing all the stuff from the show template and paste it in the edit template. And here I'm going to use a splayed form. And just like the data component, this form component also lets you set a default data set. So I will give it that user eloquent model and I set the action to user update route. Whoops. Let's close the component and let's start with an input element. So both the data and form components support two-way binding. So we can use Fuse's V model to bind to form.name. And this component also supports form validation out of the box. It's as easy as just displaying form.errors.name. That's it. And then we need a submit button. So submit, and we call it update. Let's go to the browser, change the URL to edit, and we have an error. Ah, the route binding of course requires the user eloquent model. Let's try again, refresh, and here's our little form. So here's our input element, but we still need to implement the controller stuff. So let's go to the user controller, and inside this method, I'm gonna validate the request. We only have a name, which is required. Uh, it's a string and let's say max 100. And also let's grab, grab that validated data. I need my user. And with that data, I'm gonna update the user. So user update data. And then I will redirect back to that show route. The first thing you saw where it displays the full name. So user show, and now I should not forget the user. All right, let's go back to the browser. Let's send an empty form, update, and here's my validation error. So that works. Let's do something like test one, two, three, update. And now I'm back at that show route. So the redirect also works. Let's go back to edit. And Splate also support toasts out of the box. So toast and I give it a title, maybe something like uh, the user was updated. That's it. Let's add four, five, six, update, and there is my toast. And the cool thing about this toast implementation is you can display it at any position. So let's go for left top. Uh, I can even add a backdrop. Maybe uh, we do an info styling and we can auto dismiss it, maybe after five seconds. So let's go back to my edit form and update again. And here's my info toast on the other side of the page and it's gone. So yeah, this form is quite innocent, but you might also have like a delete form and you want some extra confirmation from the user. You can do that as well. Uh, you can just add a confirm attribute to the form and then when you submit it, yep, submit, it shows this confirmation dialog. And you can even customize it. So you can change the text of the buttons and the top text, and you can add additional text. So here I'm gonna say, are you sure you want to update this user? And here it is. So that's nice to have, and this also works on links. Now, let me show you one more component. I've got an order status page and I've got an order success page. So this order page just grabs the first order from the database and it has a status. So let's check out this view, status, order status. And this is it, it's now pending. And I've created a little artisan command to change the status. So I can do order status, maybe paid. And then when I refresh the page, it's set to paid. So very simple. And what I want to show you is that I can broadcast an event to the front end with Pusher. And I can listen to it on the front end. So I'm going to set it back to pending for now. I'm going to make that event and let's call it order status was changed. Let's find this event in the editor. So go to app event. Here it is. And I'm going to implement the shoot broadcast now interface. So Laravel knows it should broadcast this event through Pusher. And I'm gonna broadcast it on my shop channel. 
and I'm going to broadcast it with some data. This is all default standard Laravel stuff. In this method, you will return an array and I'm going to return it with splayed refresh on event. And this will tell splayed that whenever this event is broadcasted, it will refresh the current page. So in my command, I need to fire that event. Event new order status was changed. Yep, that's it. And then, of course, I need to listen to it on the front end. I already set up Laravel Echo and Pusher. I'm not going to bore you with that. But in this template, we're just going to add a splayed event component. We are using the private channel shop, and we are going to listen to the event order status was changed. And I'm already making a mistake because event should be listen. Yeah, that's it. Listen. So let's make this a little bit smaller so you can see it. It's now pending. And with my command, I'm going to set it to paid. And you see it just refreshed the page. Let's do it one more time. Let's set it back to pending. There it is. And this just works out of the box. You don't have to write any JavaScript for it. And there are other options as well. So beside refreshing, you can also display a toast with toast on event. And it has the same options as you saw before. So I'm just giving it a title of the status was changed. And I'm going to position it at the center top. Well, that's it. Let's change it one more time and broadcast that event. Paid. And there is my toast. I'm going to close it and show you one last thing. And besides refreshing and displaying a toast, we can also redirect to a completely different route with split redirect on event route. And let's go to that order success route. Let's go back to Firefox. And maybe this time we will set it to, yeah, set it to complete. And now it has been redirected to that success page. So that's it for the demos. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to take a look at the docs because it has more examples and components. And please let me know what you think of Splayed here in the comment section on YouTube or maybe you can reach out on Twitter. So thanks again. Uh, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.